Today's Mailbag Monday is lubricated by Stir Stick Stout from Half Pints Brewing in Winnipeg. They describe it as having notes of dark roast coffee and semi-sweet chocolate offset by Golding's Hops in a medium-bodied coffee stout. So the first thing in just says LED and nothing else on the package. That is a reasonable enough guess though. I do tend to order LEDs. Huh. And it looks like a reel of LED strip, judging by the package. It's exactly what it is. A little bit mangled, but not, uh, not unreasonable, I don't think. 12 volts. Okay, we can do that. Any guesses? Red. Okay. Not super bright, but uh, not bad. You know, 690 some milliamps, just about 700 milliamps. That's not bad for a full uh, spool of them. What is that? That's probably five meters on there. I think that's usually what comes in these spools. Five meters, 2835 RGB LED strip light, 300 LEDs, DC 12 volt, red flexible SMD, 2835 LED diode. I got this from Delma Du underscore zero. A seller with one single point of feedback. I got this at auction for $3.82 Canadian with free shipping. Because this was an auction and because I'm not going to expect this seller to necessarily be around for very long. Yeah, they've only got a couple of items in their store. So uh, yeah, caveat emptor. So given that, I will link you to a search for this right here. Uh, it should find a few that are similar to it. Just sort by cheapest price. Nothing really in the description. It's 12 volts. It uses uh, 2835 size LEDs. It was just a cheap auction that I lowball bid on and won. So you, you never have too many strips of various different colors of LEDs around whenever your muse strikes you and you feel like making a project. Okay, next thing in says connector. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, little, some kind of little bullet connectors. I've been ordering random connectors quite a bit lately, it seems. So these appear to be a set of male and female connectors that you just solder onto the end of a piece of wire and put some heat shrink around them. I'm guessing that, why did I order these? Oh, I think I, I saw somebody using them in a project and thought they would look like a handy thing to have around. Who was it? Was it Make Me Lab? Was it Eric? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, yeah, these look like, uh, they're sort of smaller, lower current than say an XT60, but still a fairly solid one. And it looks like it'll take a number 18, maybe a number 16 wire in there. Yeah, that looks like a, I think that's a number 16. That's probably the biggest you'd want to put in there, but it will definitely fit. 10 pairs per watt, two millimeter banana gold bullet connector DIY RC battery ESC motor plug. Got these from Wendy 777-89945. Lotto Indies apparently. Um, currently they're selling for $4.32 with a $1.91 Canadian shipping. Back when I bought them several months ago, I paid $4.42 Canadian and it had free shipping at the time. Very little information down here about them. I'm going to have to look them up at some point, I guess. But uh, yeah, they're basically just connectors. Is that where I've seen them before on those uh, brushless DC motors with the electronic speed controllers? I'll have, to, I'll have to do some searching and see where I found these. I'm also going to have to keep better notes so I remember from uh, when I bought them to when they actually show up. Next in, we have integrated circuit. Okay. Where are they? Big envelope for those. Two little surface mount chips. AT Tiny 84. That's another one that I'm pretty sure I saw somebody using in a project and looked them up and thought, wow, those are cheap. Maybe I should get some just to have on hand. 
Now, if only I could remember whose project that was. Two pieces new, ATtiny84A-SSU, SOP14, Tiny84A-U, Insk, Instcock. Uh, okay, uh, I got these from eBest Chips. Uh, I did pay $4.23 Canadian with free shipping many, many months ago. So what can we learn quickly about this thing? It has 12 uh, general purpose IOs. It has an 8-bit and a 16-bit counter. It has two PWM channels, an 8-channel analog to digital converter, operates between 1.8 and 5.5 volts, hmm, 8K of uh, program memory. Seems a reasonable little chip, especially for such a cheap, cheap price. Okay, that's it for the envelopes. Now for the boxes. This one says mini par lighting. And judging by the size of it, I have a pretty good idea that that's close to what it is. I'm thinking it's a little LED stage light that I ordered to play with. Yeah, that's what it says. LED flat par 12 times 3 watt RGBW. Eh, I'll read that later. Mounting screws, mounting bracket. And there it is with the Chinese style, North American looking, if you don't look too closely, plug and some horribly thin wire on it. Right. So it does have DMX 512 control on the back of it using the three pin XLR, which is non-standard, but common on cheap fixtures. It's also got some manual controls there and apparently Sheds is the brand du jour on their stuck on little, yeah, okay. That's kind of a neat little thing. So I used to, you know, decades and decades ago, uh, help out a buddy who had a sound and lighting company and we do like stage lighting for bar bands and stuff like that. And back then, all stage lighting was strictly analog dimming. Um, DMX, it existed, but not in the skanky little bar setups that we were using. So I was always sort of intrigued. This was, like I said, what the big boys were using at the time. Well, not this, obviously, but you know. Um, so I figured when I saw this thing for painfully cheap, I would grab one and play with it because I'm pretty sure I can make an Arduino talk to it and make it get up and dance or, you know, use the pushy buttons there. If nothing else, it'd be an interesting teardown. I'm sure Big Clive has torn down something very similar to this, but that's him. That's not me. One piece LED 7x18 RGBWA plus UV power light DMX with DMX 512 6 in 1 stage light wash dj effect um yeah not exactly uh the one that i got is a 12 by 3 watt but it's currently out of stock back when i bought it it cost 13 dollars and 54 cents canadian with free shipping um i don't know what where's their smallest one here yeah they don't have anything they don't have anything like that right now but i'm sure searching for that well not even that um, just stage light DMX 512, something like that. We'll come up with a bunch. Uh, this particular one came from gifts, gadgets, and goods, which as you might expect, sells all kinds of random crap. So there's the specs on this particular one off the listing, 12 by three Watts, uh, between 90 and 240 volts AC, 50 or 60 Hertz. So just a switching power supply that can do whatever it needs to do. Uh, 36 Watts total. DMX controlled, eight DMX channels, operation mode DMX or auto run or sound or strobe or standalone and programming and stuff like that. Yeah. I think I'll plug it in and just briefly play with it right now, but it will be its own video later on. Okay. I'm not going to bother looking at the manual. I'm just going to uh, plug it in and see what happens. First thing I notice is a super flickery display. That's even flickery in real life. That's not just what you're seeing. And you hear the fan. Okay. 
So there's uh, some controls here. Oh, there we go. What is that? That is everything on. So we have three greens, three reds, three blues, and three whites in the middle. Okay. It's going to keep popping that menu button. Oh, well. Okay, so there's the reds. Red, green, blue. Okay, so it's just cycling through in this mode. All the different combinations, actually. The auto exposure on my camera is taking care of this. It's not horrendously bright, actually. You wouldn't actually illuminate a stage with this, but it would be an effect light, I guess. To shine on something just to get some color on it. Use it just for a, a pop of color on a drum kit or on uh, washing up the backdrop or something like that. Anyway, that's it in automatic mode. I'll worry about the other modes later. And the last thing in is the biggest surprise because it is something that one of you guys sent me to my mailbox. So I have absolutely no idea what this is. Which is really the best surprises. Well wrapped. Obviously this was drop shipped. It was something that was ordered from China. But What is that? A, an inductive resistive capacitive calibrated reference. Hmm. And on the back here it has... It's calibration certificate claiming to have been calibrated using both a Fluke PM3606 and an Agilent 3441 or 401A. So the calibration here looks like it was all tested at 10 kilohertz. So the capacitance measures at 9.30 microhenries. I, I think that's what that says. I'll have to uh, check it and see. I'm, uh, or is that 913.0 microhenries? Hmm. Their writing's even worse than mine is. Uh, the capacitance is 149.69 nanofarads, and the resistance is 179.99 kilo ohms. Or with the Agilent. Uh, 180.0 squiggle K ohms. Okay, let's test it. I don't have, I don't think I have any cheat meters. Oh no, this one will do capacitors. Okay. So I'll check it against the most expensive meter that I have access to, which is this Fluke 289. It says that capacitance uh, is 149, or 0.149 micro farads 149.69 nanofarads yeah so we're looking for 149 150.6 close enough for hobby work uh what else have we got here resistance okay 180.01 k actually let's check the absolute cheapest meter that i've got for this one 180.2.1.2 k ohms that's definitely close enough. The accuracy of this cheap little piece of crap constantly amazes me. And inductance is the other one. That one doesn't do inductance. That one doesn't do inductance. The only thing that I've got that does inductance is this little component tester here. And I'm going to have to rig something up, I think. This is far from ideal. I've got stray inductance for my hands and all kinds of crap in there. That shows as a 0.89 millihenry, 0.89.93, uh, uh, close, not really close, but that's not a super great test jig either, but I'm obviously going to trust this thing more than this. Well, thank you, my anonymous benefactor. That will come in handy, especially the next time I get uh, another meter to test and play with, because I definitely don't have enough meters around here. 
definitely not. That one have inductor test on it? No, capacitor, but not inductor. Oh well. I guess I've got an excuse to get another meter now, don't I? Need something that can test an inductor. Did a little bit of searching around and found a few of these on eBay. This is the cheapest one that I can find, but there's probably others. Um, I will link you to a search term to find these. And they show them being tested against this high-end piece of Agilent test equipment. There's what's inside it. There is an inductor, there is a resistor, and there is some capacitors in series, or in parallel. What did you expect to find in it? It's mostly just an acrylic box with some connectors and components on it. Though they are the high precision components, so that's good. Yeah, there's nothing much to say about it. It's just a known value that you can compare your meters against and make sure that they're in calibration or not. And there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul. As usual, quite the random collection. Um, quickly give you the transit times. These male to female pins took 35 days to get here. These ET Tiny 84s took 68 days, which is why I still can't remember who inspired me to buy them. Um, the DMX Lite took 21 days, and the LED Strip took 34 days. And of course, this... Who knows, although it came through the dropshipping warehouse in Mississauga, so it was probably only a few weeks from when whoever bought this for me ordered it. And thank you again, whoever you are. I am going to get some use out of that. And thanks to the rest of you as well. Um, thanks to my Patreon supporters, as always, for um, helping keep me in beer and helping keep the mailbags full and rolling in. I really appreciate that, guys. And to the rest of you, of course, thanks for watching. Comments and questions down below. As usual, I'll talk to you later.